be right out where the road was. <laughs> All right, let's get into the Father. I think we're going to First John two twenty nine. Human love is wonderful. God's love is far greater. It's the most life changing force in the universe because God is there. Of course, the Apostle Paul prayed in Ephesians. And you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height. For the height and the depth, and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge. Ephesians 3 17 through 19. That you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So the more you walk in love, the more fullness you will receive. The more you walk in love, the more fullness you're going to get in your life. The more you walk in love, the more ready you get to be part of the body of Christ that Christ is going to present to the Father. And you find verse John 2 29. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who also, who practices righteousness is born in him. But that's one of the Father's great love is the love that we have from him. I want to read to you from Romans chapter 5, verse 5 through then. Romans 5 through then. And hope make it not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. He didn't wait for us to get right and then die for us. He died for us before. He committed to die for us long before we even knew what was happening. Five seven it was scarcely for a righteous man for one die. He was pretty much a for a good man, some would be even there to die. But God commanded his love towards us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. While we were yet doing our own thing, Christ died for us. And then you have to realize that our Father started sending Jesus after us. One at a time. He leaves the 99 and goes back to the one. So one at a time, he found us. But it was God the Father who was sending him after you. Now verse 9, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved and ground to him. So not only did he command his love towards us, but that redemption of Jesus on the cross was so much love for you that he stopped the wrath of God from coming to us. Give him praise for that. This was Father's love. This was our Father's love that set up all this. And it was Jesus loving the Father so much, he was willing to be the scapegoat for us. He was willing to be the one. Somebody had to die in order to get rid of the sins of hell. Somebody had to die in order to take away the legalistic spirit 
I sleep and it receives it. Verse 9 again, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath to him. So God predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, where he, he had made us accepted. In the so God was changing things for us when He and Jesus and the Holy Spirit met about this. Way back then, when He said, Let us make man in our image, God was planning a blessing from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God wasn't planning for us to, you know, to die and go to hell. God was justified through the blood of Jesus. God was sanctified and set us apart. You hear me? Sanctification is, is, is a very strong word, but it's given to us through the blood of the Lamb. Your name is written in the book because you've been sanctified, set apart for God the Father. And God the Father is looking for us to be fathers that are like Him. In John 16, 26. And that day, you are asking my name. And I do not say to you that I will ask the Father on your behalf. For the Father himself loves you. Did you know that was in the Bible? God the Father loves you. The Father himself loves you, John 16, 27. Because you have loved me and have believed that I came out from God. So here's the morning question. Are y'all going to look up here? Good morning, brother. Mm -hmm. I mean, the man's made being made over by Almighty God. God is doing miracles in his life. Praise be to God. Thank you, Lord. How many of you know Jesus? Amen. So God the Father was sent after you. He sent Jesus after you. Hello? How many of you don't know Jesus? Mm. Now, in 1 Corinthians 2 and 9, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to study with that. Choose it just a minute. John 16. 26, 27. For the Father Himself loves you. Did you know that was in the Bible? Did you know that God loves you in an everlasting love? Yes. You know, a lot of people don't realize how much love God has for them. Because God is love. And love never fails. So the love of God will, will present itself to us over and over and over again. You need to hear it. Can you hear me this morning? Can you hear the Lord talking to you? The Father Himself loves you. Yes, yes. Because you have loved me and I have believed that I came out from God. Now, if Father loves me, he's got more love to give me and you in the days ahead. He's going to take us from victory to victory. Wake up. Wake up. 
It's not time to sleep. You had all night to do that. Come on, I want you to hear this this morning. It's not about Father's Day down here. It's about our Father's Day. Up there. It's about what Father has done for you. Father's calling your name. Father knew your name before you ever were born. Amen. Father called you to himself and put you in ministry. Father knows exactly what he wants to do with you. Father's in the process of streamlining you, if I may use that term. Now, 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. So you just heard Jesus say that he loves you. How many of you love him? Uh, and so if, if you love him, then you know how much he loves you. There, there's got to be a return. Because if he wasn't loving you, you would never love him. And I'll take that another way. If you weren't a great sinner, you wouldn't have a great love for God. Because him with that little, just a little has been forgiven, then he's got a little love. But when you've been forgiven of, of umpteen billion sins, you got a lot of love. Something that happened to me when I met the Lord is he come and he put his arms around me. And I felt the love of God. I didn't know what it was. I knew it was love. But I heard myself say, I've been looking for this all my life. And I was 33 years old. I was looking for that love. Didn't know I was looking for it, but I was looking for it. I tried to find it in a girl. All they did was break my heart. Hello. Most of you are ladies in here, so you try to find it in a man. And all they'll do is break your heart. And unless they found the love of God, they're not willing to apologize. See, God's got God's got things for you because you love Him. You tell Him that every day. How much of your heart really believes that? Because there's got to be correction in your heart. There's got to be a cleansing in your heart. Sometimes your heart is just so foul that you're saying, I love you more, but your heart is all messed up. My heart was still broken until the Lord got a hold of me. He healed a broken heart and he binds up the wounds. And he was binding up those wounds and binding up those wounds and they would leave it. And every time I'd speak that scripture, something else would leave me. But I has not seen nor ear heard, neither has entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Well, you'll see some of it while you're down here, but some of it's getting you prepared for what's up there. Jesus. 
Your life's not over when you leave here. In fact, your life's is starting when you leave here. You may ask you from the body is to be present with the Lord. And the, Paul said, while well, I'm down here, it's fruitful. But when I die and go up there, it's gain. So if all you're ready for is here, you're making some mistakes. You've got to be getting ready for here and there. And there is not going to stop because that's eternal. Now, in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 1, the preparation of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. See, he's preparing your heart for what's ahead. And you can't let it be stopped just because it's here. Or it's not coming here. Or you're not seeing it here. Some of it you've got to pray into. He won't show you until he gets you ready. And he won't show you until he's got other people ready. Ready for you. And then, we put it all together. Some of your privileges are being held off and, until you become everything that he wants you to be. Now, the next place I want you to go is to Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 4. I want you to see what it says in Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 4. It talks about God being a great love. You've got to learn to comprehend the love, the length, the width, the depth, the height, and the love of God surpasses knowledge. Remember I told you about the lady who got into spine in Russia? And had nine bad days. I told you about the couple who got a new liver and got freedom from hepatitis C. That's beyond the love of God in our realm. That was a supernatural thing that God did to those Three people. You hear me? So that's beyond the love of God. That's beyond the length, the, the, the height, the width, and the depth that we understand. Why? How did that lady get a new spot? I don't know. When God said he was going to do it, he said, I'm going to give her a new spot. And he did the next day when she came. We've seen her three more times after that. And she says, I have no more pain whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And the couple that had the need of new liver and the hepatitis C, well, if you ask a doctor, there's, there's no way for a doctor to heal hepatitis C. They don't know how to do that. So science says there's no way for healing from hepatitis C. And they've gotten so big and so broad and so ignorant, they just leave God out. But God, when he took care and healed those two people and gave them a new liver, he took care of the hepatitis C too in the bloodstream. That's beyond the love of God that we know about. The science is ignores it. Says, well, we, we can't heal. I've been to a doctor when I was when I was younger and, and was fighting some battles for 13 and a half years. And the doctor told me, he said, we don't know what else to do for you. There's nothing else we can do for you. So I went at home hopeless from the doctor's office that day. He says, just keep taking the medicine that we gave you. 
Because there's nothing else we can do. Can you imagine hearing that from a doctor? There's nothing else we can do. Only oh, God can. Only God. But God came through. When I got saved, and he said to me, he said, if I can hear you, don't you think? If I can save you, don't you think I can hear you? In six months' time, he took all that stuff away from me without the quit doing anything about it. That surpasses the love of God that we know about. But how much, how much of this love that we don't know about? Because God loves us. If you, if you just take a month and sit there and say to yourself, God loves me. I don't know how much, but he loves me a whole lot. So how much of that love are you showing other people? How much of that love are you, are you talking about to other people? God loves you. There's, there's nobody else that loves you the way he does. Amen. That's what we're going to get into in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4. But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. And remember, he came after you when you were yet a sinner. Yes. Yes. He, put, he put his best in you when you were still in sin. Not only were you in sin, but you were still a sinner. You were born in sin. But God had something better for you to live in than sin. God had grace. God had mercy. And, and we'll read on here. See, this, this great love of God is a mercy, rich in mercy. He's rich in mercy. Why? Well, you can't put a price on that. But when he came and found me, he was being rich in mercy. Because I was dead in my sins. There, there, were, there were at least three different times, five different times, that I should have drowned. And he wouldn't let me. I had an uncle one time who just picked me up by the back of my bed and he says, hey, where are you going? <laughs> and I was in the tide, you know, I was going out in the undertow. And he picked me up, coughing and shaking and all this other stuff. I never been a big fan of water after that. <laughs> Fell in a swimming pool one time, deep in. Got pushed in by somebody I didn't even know. Life God pulled me out. Mm. Father's great love should both amaze us and instruct us. How much of that great love do you know? How much of it do you not know? How much of it are you going to have to find out just by seeking him? When I think back on the miracles I've seen other people get, and then twice he was healed, three times he was healed. And, and Satan tried to knock me out of the park here twice. And God has sent people along and told me, said that. Satan tried to put your lights out and grab one another. Twice. When they did open heart surgery on me, my wife told me, said, they had a hard time waking you up. First love is forever. They didn't even have to put my, my machine. Because first love was forever. <coughs> Jesus was holding my heart. 
I'm making any sense to you. I want you to hear how much God loves you, how much the Father thinks about you. That sign outside is, is not, not without purpose. The marquee. I can't quote it right now, but it's a good sign. Because Father is thinking about you 24 seconds. But God, who is rich in mercy, see, mercy is a part of God's kindness. And that's where God is taking us into his kindness more and more. When we get down into verse 7, that in the ages to come, as Ephesians 2 7, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace by what? And his kindness. So God's going to God's going to bring acts of kindness to you. Yes, some of them will come through people, but some of them will come because God just stops the lack of the blessing from coming to you. God just does something in the spirit world that makes you sleep better. God just does something in the spirit world that, that uh, makes you have an abundance. And you don't deserve it. That's mercy and kindness. All wrapped together. That's love and kindness. Together. <laughs> the word is, is used 240 times in this in the Old Testament. No mind is new. So whether you go back to the Hebrew language or back to the Greek language, it doesn't matter. It's still love and kindness. It's still mercy and kindness. And he won't get away from it. God just keeps projecting it over and over and over again through the scriptures. I say it for a week if we had time to do all the uh, kindness. But we don't. But I want you to go back to Ephesians 2 4 and read with me uh, up to verse 10. When God, who is rich in mercy, that's a type of kindness, for his great love. Wherewith he has loved us. Even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. And has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now you see that at the right hand of Christ. Do you know that? Yes. So the right hand of Christ, that, that's, that's the right hand of the master, and that's the right hand of authority. So he's releasing authority to you all the time. And he's seated at the right hand of the Father, and the Father's releasing authority to him all the time. This is, this is not a, 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 just a dumb religion. Christianity. It's not a religion, it's a relationship. Amen. And you're growing in that relationship as you seek Him, as you study His Word, as you believe that God's got something better for you. Amen. Your life's life is not over. You, you've got a, a, a project ahead of you that God has assigned to you to do. Wow. And has raised us up together, verse 6, and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. We're just now getting into the edge of that. You know, because the Holy Spirit spoke to me, he says, now's the time for the exceeding grace of God to be poured out. And he's going to do it through kindness. He's going to do it through mercy and, and love. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Don't let this fall on deaf ears. Don't let this fall on a heart that's just too hard. Let your heart be changed today. Because this is a great love. This is a great outpouring of the Spirit of God. 
And that's what America needs, and that's what the world needs. Amen. And exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. It's going to come through Christ Jesus, who is there for us. When God raised the Son of God from the dead, he didn't have to make him the Son of God again. He was already the Son of God. He was born into Mary's womb, uh, through Mary's womb, as the Son of God. He's alive forevermore. That's what God got back in him. And he put the glory back in him like it, like it, was, like it was before the foundation of the world. When Jesus sat, sat with uh, uh, those Old Testament saints and did miracles in the midst of them, he wasn't called Jesus back then, but he was Christ. He was the Son of God doing miracles. Then he came to the earth to Mary, but he's still the Son of God. He's the Son of Man and he's the Son of God. Hmm. Now verse 8, for well, by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourself, it is a gift of God. Our salvation is a gift that God gave us. You didn't get saved by any of your works. You didn't get saved because you're a good person. The only way you become a good person is through Jesus. And when you start doing God the Father's works, that's what makes you good. Well, in Ephesians 2 and 9, not in works as any man should boast. See, see we, we boast in what we can do. I told you about me wanting to start a school for, for God. And I was going to go buy a piece of property, believe in infinite money. And, I want to start a Bible school. And God told me, he said, son, that's not what I've called you to. I want you to be part of my Bible all over the world. Not just in one corner of Georgia. See, not, not of my own works. It's, it's God's work. It's what God wants you to do that's going to prosper. Now, verse 10. I'm sorry, I gotta go back to verse 9. Not of works as any man should boast. Jesus. Jesus and the good works. I think I left part of that out, which God has. But we are his work which should have created in Christ before the foundations of the world. That we should walk in them. So uh, I've got it out of order. But verse 10, for well, we are his work which have created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. So before, before this was even written, God ordained that we should walk in this. What? We are his workmanship. What else? We are in Christ. What else? And God has ordained this for us to walk in this. Those three things are in verse 10. The love and kindness of God is going to come and find us. But it's also going to work through us to other people. And instead of wanting to fight with somebody, you know, I, I can walk by certain people, and if, if I pay attention to what I'm hearing about them, uh, if I follow them, they'll get in a fight before long. Because they got a fighting spirit. They know how to swear, they know how to be unclean, they know how to uh, do all the things that can raise their temper, and they know how to fight. But sometimes I've heard the Holy Spirit tell us that was a fighter. 
Now the Lord knew things about people before they ever, ever opened their mouth. And sometimes God is starting to reveal those things to us. So I, I try to be still and say, Lord, what do you want me to do? He said, I just want you to know it. He hadn't gone any further than that. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5. Even when we were dead in sin, he has quickened us together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. You, you, uh, preacher preached the other day. By grace you have been saved, period. Don't, don't make it of your faith. See, that, that's your works. Grace has saved you, not your works. Grace has saved you, not your faith. When those people came into the Episcopal Church and I got saved that day, it was their faith. It was their prayers. It was it was a group of, of people that were embracing me and getting me to the point where I could be saved and have a relationship with Christ. I didn't know anything about the faith. I didn't know anything about the word. No. They were changing. Everything that he preached to, he was good. Everything that he said was going right over my head. Didn't have any place to stop. Because the heart went right. Hello. Amen. You're still here? Amen. But that day, the Holy Spirit quickened me. That day, that man laid hands on me. We started praying in tongues. I didn't even know what tongues was. I'd never heard it before. But he was praying, praying in the spirit. And exactly what I had asked God for is what I got. I said, I want what he's got. And I got his glory. Father's glory came into me. And I walked away from that altar as high as that chair off the ground. I could see my feet moving, but they weren't touching the ground. And God let me stay up there for a year. God's got something better for you. Fathers, stay your children. God's got something better for them. You know, the commitment that that we made to, to our, even to our grandchildren, is that you're going to get the word. And I've had one, my oldest granddaughter, she, she sent me a card for last year. And she said, thank you for the things you tell me about the Lord. I don't, I don't go and preach to her but when she's got questions or, or when we're just talking. Some things come out, you know. And then she hears me. And she goes and studies me. And my grandson, you know, that, that shirt talking about constant relationship, ongoing relationship. I told him, I said, he's, he's I, don't, I don't know if he'd care about me sharing this with him. He's not too happy in his work. And he had an uh, agent that, that uh, skipped. Uh, don't you tell me? I know, I know that. He's not found peace in anything that he's trying to do. I said, well, keep walking and see if God's going to call you. Sometimes your call is so strong that you won't, you won't be at peace with anything until you get in the call. See, that's the same thing here. You wonder what God's doing, and yet you don't have any peace. Or you, you go, go into certain things and they're not peaceful. And you need to back off. And you need to say, Lord, what, what are you trying to show me? What are you trying to tell me? Because in this, this way, I'm trying to go with that peace. And the road's getting more and more narrow. You realize that? 
Come on, this road is getting more and more narrow, and that's the Lord narrowing things down. Because he's got a particular walk for you. And there's only certain places where you can go. But they're the best places that God has for you. <coughs> and there will be no failures because you go from victory to victory. You don't go from victory to failure to another victory. You go from victory to victory. You've got to change that mentality to think that way. There's not any failure in God. And there shouldn't be any failure in your life. Back off. Take another 30 days with him. Keep praying and seeking him. And say, what do you want? What do you want me to do? He, didn't mean, he doesn't mean for you to end up homeless. He didn't mean for you to sit and have nothing. Jesus told the, the, the one that was against him, he says, the poor you will have with you always. Why? Because they won't figure out how to live. And some of them don't want to figure out how to live. So you can't help them too much. Because you're getting in God's way. What am I doing with all this? Kindness is what God's got for you. Kindness is what He's going to show us. But you've got to hear it. You, you've, got to, you've got to want it. And you've got to seek for it. And it's his, his desire, and it's his ability. But you got to go after it. Colossians 3, 12, and I'll start to close down. Talking about his kindness. Talking about his loving kindness is really the way you have to put it together in the New Testament. It's, it's a loving kindness. It's a mercy and a kindness wrapped together. He's going to have mercy on you. He's had mercy on you already. He got you saved. He got you filled with the Holy Ghost. He gave you the gift of his exceeding grace. Come on. He's constantly pouring out on us. If we just take the time to listen. When you're not sure, go back and talk to him again. Say, I'm not sure what I'm doing. I'm not sure where you want me to go. I'm not sure if this is where I belong. Come on. There's some things I still can't do because, I'm, Lord, if that's your voice, I'm not sure about it. Hello. And as you master, that's what I'm saying to him. Lord, I got to become more sure before I can walk in that. Do you hear me? Amen. I'm not afraid of what I'm hearing, but I don't know how to complete what I'm hearing. Anybody, anybody understand where I'm coming from? Maybe you can Kindness, Colossians 3, 12 to 15. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God. You're the elect of God. You have been elected by Almighty God to walk with Him. You are chosen by Him. You don't have any choice in the, in the operation of what He's doing. You just got to get into it. You've been elected to be higher than the nations of this world. You've been elected to be blessed by Almighty God. Wow. Holy and beloved, bowels of mercy. See that? Bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of the mind, 
meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. And you know, along with that statement, and listening to Kevin Coleman one day talking about the love of God, he, he sat there and said, I just forgive everybody. And I heard myself say, yeah, I just forgive everybody. Why not? What they do tonight to change? And it's forgiven everybody else and I'm forgiven. You end up setting yourself free when you forgive other people. Christ forgave you, so also do you. And above all these things, put on charity. Which is the word for love. That's a God word. Put on God's kind of love. Which is which is the bond of perfectness. You want you want to get into the perfection? You want to get into the excellency of Almighty God? Then learn how to walk in love. Learn how to use love the way He does. Not the, not the way we try to. Not by trying to change people, but letting God change people. There's a big difference. I can't put my values on the church. I can't put what I think we should be doing on people. But I can tell you what God says. I try to. You know, you come in my office for a counseling session. And I got a female in there. Uh, but, but what we're trying to do is hear the Holy Spirit for you. And whatever the Holy Spirit say, that's what's, that's what's going to come out of us. <coughs> and we're, we're not trying to correct you. It's God who wants to correct you. It's God who wants to give you something for your future. Now, look, look at verse 15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. If the heart's not ruled by peace, something wrong with your heart. <coughs> you know, I can, I can, if this was wood, I'd be knocking on the door. God is knocking on the door of grace and telling you to be at peace. And to start receiving the kindness of the Lord. Not only for you, but for others you know. That your kindness has got to go on. And your loving kindness has got to touch others. And, uh, somebody, somebody was talking to me this morning and I said, uh, please, please pray for me. I want to be free from selfishness. Because I think I'm selfish a lot of times. Let the peace of God rule in your heart, to the which also you are called in one body and be thankful. See, we don't think too much about called in one body, but but that's the relationship of us together, gripping one another, called to one body, the fullness of Christ. It's going to take all the church. It's going to take everybody in the body of Christ eventually. And it's going to come, I think, before the rapture. Hello. But it's going to be the presentation of the fullness of Christ. Grabbing each other, holding each other, and being one in the spirit. God, hey, we talked about a unity. And that's the fullness of Christ. And then he's going to turn, he'll be there. And he's going to turn to the Father and say, Here's your church. This is what you want to do. Kindness allows God to move in your heart 
and cause you to have acts of kindness in your life. You don't, you don't know everybody that God wants you to be kind toward. And you're going to find out. And you know, I, I said to the people in, in Savannah, I said, two years is not a long time. And some of them looked at me like, you want me to wait two years? Now, what I'm saying to you, over the next two years, you're going to see people fall away from God because they won't receive his kindness and they won't receive his mercy that he has for them. See, I've, I've had that happen one time already in Walmart. Coming out of Walmart, and the person with me, I told him, I said, you don't have to wait a minute. I got to talk to that man. He would not allow prayer. He would not allow me to say anything to him. He said, well, I appreciate you stopping to talk to me. But uh, I don't want to know that. So I got off the license. If you don't want God, what's the use of each other? If there's no agreement, how can two walk together? Kindness is a quality that God requires in your life. Kindness always requires action to be enforced. Kindness is, a, is, is a loving kindness, steadfast love, grace, mercy, faithfulness, goodness, devotion. Kindness is even the goodness of God. Kindness is what you're going to be devoted to. It actually translates in the Old Testament sometimes uh, that kindness is the goodness of God. Okay, it can be translated. Kindness is also listed as the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5 John 2. And kindness goes on and on. Uh, basically, it means doing, doing uh, thoughtful deeds to others. That's what kind of Amen? Amen? Praise God. I'm going to stop right there. I hope this helps you today. Praise God. We started off talking about love, mercy, and you just have to look at the mercy and the kindness together. Amen? Praise God. Uh, let's see what Father wants to do today. Holy Spirit, where do you want us to be? What do you want us to lead us into? That shows your kindness to us. I tell you what I hear. Give and it shall be given unto you. I'm not talking about just money. I'm talking about having an attitude of giving to others and allowing God to use you that way. He will. Use the Lord the way you want to. And have to give myself in kindness to others. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.